everyone, I'm Kate Lim, and I'm an educator at the Ontario Science Centre. I love plants, but they don't love me back. Houseplants tend to wither and die under my touch. So I reached out to some of my friends at the Ontario Science Centre for help on how to keep my plants alive. I know that my plants are going to need a few things to stay alive. They're going to need some sunlight. They're going to need water. They need carbon dioxide as food from the air. They're also going to need some nutrients from the soil. Plants normally absorb those nutrients through their roots, and that means these guys are going to need some roots to stay alive. Luckily, my friend Louise reminded me that when you put some plants in water, they'll grow roots on their own. So let's focus on water and my plants. Plants, like all living things, are made of cells. You probably know what cells look like from science class. Animal and plant cells have a lot in common, but there's some differences too. I'm going to take this chance to learn a little bit more about plant cells, and you can do some research as well. So all plants are made of cells, but some cells may have a different function or job than others. Root cells are usually located underground and are responsible for many things, including taking in water from the soil that the entire organism, the plant, needs. But how does that work? Here's a model of a plant cell. Water is made up of molecules, which are small enough to travel inside of cells. Water enters a plant cell through gaps in the cell wall, and inside the cell, water is stored inside the vacuole. The more water in the vacuole, the more it pushes against the cell wall and keeps the plant from wilting. Okay, so water is stored inside the vacuole, and it can swell up when there's enough water for the cell. So when my plants are wilting, it means there's not enough water inside their cell's vacuoles. Giving my plants more water can help turn my black thumb green. I guess that's pretty obvious. But how does water actually get inside the vacuole inside cells? Your cells don't all have tiny robotic needles injecting water inside them. That would hurt. We're going to have to find out with some experiments. I discovered something by accident as I was making a cup of tea. Looking carefully at the tea bag as I put it in the hot water, I noticed the tea particles moved out of the tea bag. They were moving from where there was a lot of tea particles, the tea bag, to where there wasn't very many, the glass of water. You might notice a lot of things move from high to low concentration. People very willingly exit a packed elevator, heat moves out of your body and into the cold void outside, and perfume sprayed in one corner of a room eventually moves throughout the entire space. Diffusion can also happen across a membrane like a cell membrane. It happens in our lungs when we breathe in air, and it's how plants get the carbon dioxide they need for photosynthesis to make food. Let's experiment with a cell membrane. What's the biggest cell you can think of? There's probably one inside your house right now in the fridge. That's right, I'm talking about eggs. Eggs have a tough shell that works similarly to a cell wall in plants. Underneath the shell or cell wall is the membrane. If you looked at a membrane under a microscope, you can see that it's not totally solid. There are actually tiny holes or pores in it. To experiment with your egg's membrane, you'll need to get rid of the shell first. I dissolved mine in vinegar overnight and it left the membrane of the egg intact. Now, if you place the squishy, shellless egg in water, the water can move across the membrane through the tiny holes into the egg, making the egg swell up and get bigger. In the same way, water particles can move through the pores of a plant or animal cell. Diffusion can't be the only way things move inside cells. In our egg experiment, something pulled water into the egg. When there's a high concentration of a particle, like tea in one area, and it draws additional water from another area, that's called osmosis. If a cell has lots of molecules inside it, it will pull water in from outside the cell. Just like the shellless egg pulled water in from the water surrounding it inside the cup. Try your own egg experiment at home with the permission of a parent or guardian. Form a hypothesis before you put your naked egg into a liquid. Do you think it will swell? Do you think it will shrink? Can you change its color? Try different experiments and see what happens. So water moves into plant cells because of osmosis, and once it's inside the cell, it gets stored inside the vacuole. That makes sense for the root cells, but how does water get all the way up into the plant's leaves. I asked my friend Simon and he sent me this video. He said, water sticks together through a force called cohesion and can make water move uphill if something starts it going. 
Test it by lining up five cups and fill every other one with water and food coloring. Link all of them together with paper towels. The water particles pull each other off the paper towel like they're linked in a chain. Their cohesive or sticking force is stronger than gravity. Water in the root cells will travel using cohesion up the stem or trunk of a tree through the xylem. That's a tube in the plant that can transport water. Water travels in a plant through its xylem like blood flows through the veins and arteries of a human. We can actually see the xylem in a piece of celery by letting it absorb colored water. For this experiment, I'm placing the celery in a small amount of water, one quarter cup, and dyeing the water with five drops of food coloring. How do you think you can check if this water makes it to the top of the plant? Take a minute to brainstorm. I dyed this celery yesterday, and one test I thought of is that the xylem should appear a different color when cut open. It looks blue all the way up the plant. Can you think of any way to check the water movement without cutting the celery open? Now that you know how water moves in plants, see if you can trace the path of water through the roots up to the leaves and identify the transport mechanisms. There's lots of fun things to try to mix up your experiments with plants. Do different fluids act the same? What if the soil has lots of nutrients? Does light make the water move differently? Is it faster? Slower? Try it out and share your results, your failures and successes with us at the Ontario Science Centre. And remember to always ask, test and repeat.